Paul Scully. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I think it's important to note the history behind this. We've heard earlier on from my uh, right honourable uh, colleague, the uh, member for Bethnal Green and Bow, that the Rohingya uh, Muslims have been in um, uh, that part of Myanmar for many hundreds of years. The British, when they, uh, when they were controlling Burma, uh, did use um, uh, people from Bangladesh, from what is now Bangladesh, moving across what was then a very, very permeable border uh, for employment and for labour. And at that time, it did start muddying the waters because we, we didn't register those people. We didn't really acknowledge those people as being uh, uh, Bangladeshi. So it's given the Myanmar government the excuse now to set a new year zero, uh, the fact that and denying those people that have been there, that have got roots there for so many years, uh, the, the, the right to citizenship. When I was um, in uh, Burma in February 2016, I uh, was at the time of the transition government and I was really hopeful, everybody was incredibly optimistic at that time uh, that the, 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 as the country came into the light we would start seeing the end to ethnic conflict around, uh, around the country that's so desperately needed. And I ask everybody here and I ask the Minister when you do condemn uh, the actions that are going on in Rakhine State, we actually acknowledge the fact that actually the Burmese people are largely behind the actions, as shocking as that may sound. There are demonstrations in Yangon where people say, we stand with the lady, we stand with the army, we stand with the Burmese people. We've heard Aung San Suu Kyi speak uh, when we were actually uh, at the airport in Cox's Bazaar, she was speaking at the time. Uh, and we've all said, we've all said that she needed to speak uh, far more forthrightly than condemning the actions. But we must concentrate on the man that can stop this tomorrow, Ming Ong Lan, the Commander-in-Chief. And actually, what you have, if we actually just whip this up into the West against a nationalist uprising in Myanmar, you do run the risk that this is a man that actually uh, may fancy his chances of presidency in 2020. So what you actually may end up with is the military back in control at the ballot box, oh, not by the... Uh, uh, but not by the gun. My old friend is making an extraordinarily powerful point, and one we, sh with, 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 we should all be familiar with, which is the point is during this transition, the military retained 25% uh, in the parliament, and the commander-in-chief is no fan of Aung San Suu Kyi, yeah. and so she is in an extraordinarily difficult position. Yes, we'd like her to speak out more, but equally we do need to recognise in the longer term that what we have seen, the progress we've seen in Burma, could easily go backwards, which would endanger peace throughout the country, not just in Rakhine. So people in this, in this chamber, members in this chamber and around the country are rightly passionate about what is happening, the atrocities that are happening, that was witnessed uh, by, by a number of us that went over to Cox's Bazaar. But we must realise that the situation in the country is complex and our response must absolutely reflect that so that we don't close the country in. Because what will happen also is that the conflicts that are happening in Rakhine State will start to occur, reignite again at Kachin State, in Shan State and, and all of those other areas where the peace process under Kofi Annan's commission has started to ta have some sort of traction, albeit will take some time. But one of the key things is that the, uh, the uh, military are claiming that this is a response to the Arakan um, Rohingya Solidarity Army, ARSA, um, and they are terrorists. Now, let's just assume that there are some terrorists there, and frankly, if there are, they number a couple of hundred at most, N not the, uh, the, the, the 500,000 people that we've seen cross the border. But if they are, let me tell you about one story that I saw, one person that I met, uh, along with my uh, honourable friends from Colchester and St Albans. A 60-year-old lady who came over, she was with her surviving grandchildren, and I mean surviving grandchildren. Um, her son-in-law had been stabbed in front of her and dragged away, assumed dead. Her 12-year-old grandchild was beheaded in front of her. I will. Will my older friend agree, though, that we were given absolutely her words verbatim and they were translated by people within our party who understood, so we were not being duped in any way? Absolutely. We, we, we picked all of the dozen or so people over two days that we spoke to. We, got, we had the translators there ourselves, and this is absolutely verbatim. Uh, another one of our grandchildren had their genitals mutilated and chopped off. Um, 
This woman was dead behind the eyes. Can you understand why? There is no way. Now, you, M Madam Deputy Speaker, the how, the, uh, my colleagues, you tell me, is that lady a terrorist? There is absolutely no way. The, res the response by the military is clearly disproportionate. It clearly needs to be called out. And we must absolutely make sure that every time we have um, dealings with the Burmese government and the military, that we call them out for what it is. We need to work out in a regional uh, a sense as well, working with our Commonwealth friends as well, but also trying to encourage the ASEAN countries to respond, to have a regional response. At the moment, there's not a lot of um, uh, movement from Thailand. The Indian uh, government is, uh, is uh, rejecting the Rohingya Muslims that have actually settled within that country as well. And the, this isn't just a Burmese-Bangladesh uh, situation, as we've, abs uh, as we've heard before. So I would just conclude with actually um, acknowledging the fact, as we've heard, that the Bangladeshi government are doing a fantastic job under such different, difficult circumstances. The fact that this isn't a, a new thing is absolutely acknowledged by the fact that the Kautapalon camp is 30 years old. This isn't a new camp that's just been set up. It's 30 years old. There are two treaties outstanding with Bangladesh and Burma dating back from 1978 onwards for the safe return of uh, Rohingya Muslims back to Burma. Something that we've absolutely has been ignored by the Burmese government and we must absolutely make sure that a treaty that can be backed up by international support can be put in place and allow the safe return. Thank you. Sarah